Body counts on the war on terror since the U.S. began military operations in Afghanistan have never been fully reliable. But a new report published this month by the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War seeks to set that record straight. The report's titled Body Count, Casualty Figures After 10 Years of the War on Terror. And it outlines that 1.3 million people have died as a direct or indirect result from America's military operations against terrorism. Looking specifically at three countries, the statistics point to at least 1 million Iraqi deaths, 220,000 Afghans and 80,000 dead in Pakistan. Now, the report makes clear, however, that these are conservative estimates and that the true number could be as high as 2 million people. The authors add that previous numbers were lower and often conflicting because they were based on methods of determining death tolls known as passive methods. This means relying on official military records, reports from morgues, and physician statistics. Now, compounded with crumbling medical infrastructures, these methods lack the ability to see the bigger picture. And by this we mean that given the way war is waged today, drone strikes, secret raids, carpet bombings, it's very difficult to get an accurate sense of casualties. The authors say this report is a more extensive look at the true scope of the human cost of the war on terror. But if you look at news headlines today, we continue to see the rising human cost of the war play out, not only in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, but in Yemen, Somalia, Libya, and Syria. And consider this, in a recent trip to the U.S., Afghan President Ashraf Ghani made a new deal with U.S. officials to slow down the U.S. troop withdrawal from Afghanistan, a point that Dr. Robert Gould, one of the co-authors of the report, says is a result of how insulated the American people have become to ever-growing body counts, adding that, quote, at a time where we're contemplating at this point cutting off our removal of troops from Afghanistan and contemplating new military authorization for increasing operations in Syria and Iraq, this insulation from the real impact serves our government in being able to continue to conduct these wars in the name of the war on terror. Now, in the end, the goal of the report is to encourage action on bringing an end to failed policies, because ultimately the perpetuation of the war on terror not only comes at a tremendous human cost abroad, but at a heavy financial burden on the economy here at home. Manuel Rapolo, RT Studios, Washington.